How are you going to do these legs? Well, we use some air on them, it's probably easier. Use some what? Some air on them, it's probably easier. <laughs> Alright, everybody, so we're <laughs> back here. We You saw earlier in the video that we. Uh, we dressed the deer, you know, deboned everything, got all the meat out. Now we're here processing the meat tonight. Um, we're going to cut it up into chunks, have a couple of roasts that we're going to do. Got some back straps, some tenderloin. So we're just going to walk through that process and show you guys how we do it. Um, I'm going to leave it with the master right here. He does it all the time. Well, as usual, has been my MO for my YouTube videos is I forget to start the camera before I seal one up. So this is one of the roasts already sealed up. You know, that's just my thing, I guess. I, I forget. You know, it's one of the parts of being a YouTuber and a creator. Sometimes you get all excited and yep. forget to hit the camera. So I done got one roast done, and we're gonna do one more. This is the this is part of the uh, hindquarters, and I call this a flat roast. It's it's the uh, if you when you're uh, processing the, the hindquarters, you'll have there's five major uh, meat uh, muscle groups in there. There's one that's the round, where his butt cheek is, and this one rides right alongside of that, and it's got a big piece of flap that sits on it too. That's really only good for grinding. But I always try and save this one and the round one as my roast, yep. and then everything else gets ground up, and it makes a fantastic roast. It's, it's the same thickness all the way through, except for right at the end, and it just it just cooks really well. Yeah, we got one more. We're gonna go ahead and all right. we're gonna knock that roast out. All right, so, so this is a round roast yeah, that round Pop one. was talking about. All right, so this is the round one. So if you look at this, I'll get you a little bit closer. You can see how the butt's kind of, it's kind of the round. This is, this is the rear end, the butt cheek, you know, and it's a good soft muscle. You know, you know, believe it or not, it really is really nice and soft. So, all right, so the one that I do, let me, let me see something right quick. Hold on. Something to dry this thing off. Let me bring the camera around. Yeah, bring it on over here. So, what I got going on? All right, so I got a pretty intri intricate uh, thing going on here called redneck putting stuff up. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna clean this up. So I do this every now and again because what happens invariably when you're doing deer, you're gonna get blood in this little blood tray. But I want to talk about this little candy, this uh, the vacuum seal right here because this is. My third attempt to find a good sealer. And this thing, I'm tell you what, I will give this thing rave reviews any day of the week and twice on Sunday. It's made by Kios. And one thing I love about it is how compact it is. It's, it packs away really well. It's got easy controls. And it seals every single time without fail. So... Let's get started. All right, so I went ahead and hit the button for moist. Um, hit the button. Hit the button for moist. So because these are going to be moist, and then all I got to do is just lay this up on here. I got these two little tabs to keep it from going too far. You lock it both down. And hit the vacuum button. Push the two buttons on the side, top pops up, and I usually will take a rag and go ahead and run, my, run it down here to get the, the residual juice in here because you don't want this all running around in your freezer whenever you, whenever you start to whenever you put it in there. Show that again. Right here on the edge. So this is so this is the this is where the seam made sealed it, and then this edge where it was sucking all the juice out. You can see all the stuff that's inside of there. So let me uh, go ahead and clean that out. I like to clean it out real good because. What will happen is it will run all over your refrigerator when you thaw it out or it will run all over in your freezer when you put it in here because it doesn't freeze instantaneously. All right now, get you a Sharpie and write on here what it is because if you don't do it, 
you'll forget, and then you'll be going, hey, honey, what is this we put in the bag? And she'll say, I ain't got an idea. I went in there. I, you know, I'm just having a conversation. Yeah. I'm going to put rump roast on this one. Amen and amen again. In 2020. It's what we call the round ones. We call the round ones rump roast. Rump roast. Rump roast. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to get on to the grind. And just so you know, some people go, well, why you grind up your deer meat? Why didn't you just cut it? Well, you know what? They ain't nothing better than making chili with ground deer meat. That's right. My wife just made some this past weekend, and let me tell you, it was the bomb. She is a master at cooking deer. I just want to tell you, I want to toot her horn a little bit because she is my one and only, and she is the best cook I know. So let's get on with it. Hey, I'll put it to you like this. <laughs> her roast is the only roast I'll eat. I don't like roast, but her roast is the only roast I'll eat. All right, so this this guy, I've had this for a while. This is a, this I've had this for about five years, and it's a, I'm on, you know, it's bad. It's a Chinese version of it. It's called Sun Mile. But if you go on Amazon, you look at Sun Mile. I don't even know if this is still for sale anymore. But I looked them up, and I looked at every single product that Sun Mile made. They make a whole bunch of stuff. Every single one of them was 4.8 out of 5 with several thousand reviews. So Chinese or not, I go for stuff that works. Right. So, and this thing works, and it it grind, grinds and grinds and grinds. All right, so we've got my little meat pusher. I'm going to cut this thing on. It's going to make some noise, so we're probably going to end up playing music over this while it's doing its thing. And while he's doing that, I'm going to be cleaning the rest of the meat over here, washing it off. We want to make sure we get a good thorough wash, try to get any dirt, hair. Uh, any hair, yeah, <laughs> um, any kind of, uh, you know, maybe blood clots, anything like that. We want to try to get all that stuff off before we grind it up in here. So I'm going to be over here you know, rinsing all that stuff off, washing it off, getting as much of that stuff off. Then we'll get it over to the cutting board, cut it up into chunks, put it in a grinder, and get it all packed up. Now, one thing I will tell you, the next deer I kill, I'm going to show you guys how to make deer jerky. Hey, man. So that's what we're going to be hooking and jabbing on. All right, so let's get on. Twelve seconds later. In okay, case y'all were curious and didn't do the math, this is here Tuesday. We killed that deer on Saturday, so it's been sitting in the cooler, bleeding out. And that's what you probably need. That's what you need to do if you don't like the game taste of your deer. Set them in a cooler, and if you have it, if it's cool enough outside, you can just hang them up and let them bleed out, and leave them there a couple of days. Because if it's cold enough, the flies ain't gonna get to it, and it'll it'll bleed it out, and that'll be some of the best deer meat you ever had. <laughs> Yeah. That's how I do my pound, my pound packs here. How you gonna be 
do these legs. Well, we can use some air on them, it'd probably be easier. Use what? Some air on them, it'd probably be easier. <laughs> I don't know, man. You know, I, I told you, deer, deer legs to me, and the front and front shoulders is the biggest pain in the butt to work with. Yeah, I'm gonna have to take them home so I can debone them and then bring it over here and grind it up. You didn't get your front legs off the dough you shot. I cut off one and then I, I saved another one whole. And put it. I got a <laughs> big ball vacuum seal bag. <laughs> seal it all up. <laughs> you want you want to do that? You want to save one of these? That way, when they smoke theirs, we can smoke ours at the same time. to say I've had food saver, I've had uh, an hour mark, I've had uh, two food savers actually. Now that I think about it. And every single one of them, after about a year and a half of doing this, they just died. And Except for this one. This is the only one that's kept on rocking. Now, what's so different about this one than the others, I have no idea. But, once again, this one got uh, 4.8 stars out of like 1,900 reviews, which is pretty awesome when you think about it. Yeah, I do buy a lot of stuff off, stuff off of Amazon, but you don't. You know, <laughs> First place I shop. Who don't? You know, because that's why I do that. Now, I told y'all before on the other day, I am a, I like to shop. Uh, for, I like to sh price shop. I don't just go and buy it as soon as I find, I find it. I go and look and see, you know, who's got the best price. Now, I usually will find that Amazon has the best price, but every now and again, In most cases. every now and again, I'll find it where it's cheaper yep. or Amazon don't carry it. Case in point. And I'll, uh, and I'll uh, be doing the video on this pretty soon, but I'm uh, building a, rebuilding my AR-15. Uh, Amazon does not sell bulk carrier groups. <laughs> no surprise. You know, that'd be kind of uh, an oddball thing to find on Amazon, I think. Same part of Yet, they got a lot of other stuff, though. I was surprised. And I bought for a fair amount of the, the stuff that I I got for it off of Amazon. But like I said, I'll be sharing that with you here in the coming days. Um, how does how my AR-15 got got totaled in the first place is I uh, was 
taking the uh, hand guards off. It had a traditional uh, M4 with the plastic hand guards. I was taking them off one day, and in the process of getting it off, the uh, hand guard uh, clamp on it, the D ring, the D ring or D rail or whatever this thing's called, it just came undone. Well, I tried to fix it with a screwdriver and a hammer, and you can imagine how that went. That's usually the first place we go. So, it's a screwdriver. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, basically, I took it apart. And it was in the process of when I was building my 300 blackout. Is uh, when all this came to came to pass. Well, that was two years ago. And it's just been sitting in my cabinet in there for two years. You know, all tore apart. And... Now it's getting put back together again. So I'm going to I'll walk you through. If you've never seen how to how to assemble one of these, they're really not that easy. It's one of the, I call it the it's the Jeep of guns. Yeah. You know, I used to have a Jeep, and I can tell you, it's the Jeep of guns because it's got the ultimate amount of accessories for it. Processing if it didn't. That sounds almost here with this. Alright, this is meat packed up here. Smaller than you can on this, but that works. Do we need to go take that the roast and stuff down there? And the, yeah, wouldn't be a bad idea to really put it in the freezer. Savannah, can you take that down there and put that in the refrigerator while we're doing this so it stays cold? Hold it in the freezer down there. Put it in the freezer, it don't matter. No, there's only two in the right, closer so part. And then I do, I'll here. get it in the bag, and then I'll take this meat, and I'm going to mash it kind of flat. Yeah. The chest one, please. Mash it kind of flat. What this does is it allows you to be able to stack them in the freezer much easier than the being just a big round lump of meat. Six hours later. All right, you're good. You got a Ziploc bag? I'm gonna get a Ziploc bag for this week.
see, they, they're going to paint it out to be, but they don't listen to what it really happened. I know what I'm doing. this thing cost you? Thank you. 
right there, and I'll just wait and give you yeah. a wait on it. That's fine. Can you want some fish, some brown rice, and some asparagus to run up? I deal with that. Do without the brown rice, but why don't you like brown rice? It tastes like cardboard. Oh. Oh, I do some quinoa. Yeah. yeah. Quinoa or some couscous? <laughs> some couscous is good too. Fish and couscous is really good. Ain't that right? Ain't that right? Get some. Nice right in that. 1.6. 1.6. 1.6 ounces? Yeah. 1.6.6. Hmm? 1.6.6. 1.6 and 6.5 ounces. What is that? So 1.5 ounces. What does that say on y'all? How much? 8 ounces would be a half. hear a dump truck running through a nature Christmas factory. How we, this is how we eat steak. It looks like little junk steak. Little big steaks.
take these whole and put them in two separate bags. Already got them cut. Right. <laughs> cool. Here we'll put one tin of one in that bag. One tin of one in this bag. And she fucked in with a next week for my meal preps. Shoot, I want to shoot a horse that we get about 50 pounds of meat out of. Well, the thing about it is you won't get no neck meat. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. And that's where a lot of the weight is. That one, and that one I saw. Son. Which one? I'd show you. When we get done, I'll, I'll put it up. You show you on camera? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. His neck is like. Really? He's, he's probably five six old. Well, we need to get him. Yeah. He's gonna start downsizing. No, he's he's just on that up year, I think. He's just on that up year. Well, here's the thing. Let's take a look at him. He's gonna be the one that we ain't gonna see him but one time during the run. That's it. Yep. And that's going to be the only shot we're going to have. Two pounds, ten ounces. So I imagine the tenderloin is probably ten ounces. And the back strap's two pounds. All right. Well, we got it all done. Come out to be uh, just about a little over 27 pounds total. And we had 17 pounds of the ground. So... No, we had, we had 22 pounds. 22 pounds of ground. 22 pounds of ground, which is unbelievable. Yeah. The two back straps weighed about two and a half pounds a piece, which is pretty good for uh, that size of a deer. And Oh, I forgot to include the roasts, so we probably got 30 pounds oh, yeah. between about the roasts. 30, that's right. I forgot about the roasts. But anyway, it turned out a very good harvest. Got a lot of good meat put up, yep. and uh, we got got it all done. So now, we just, now the hard part, clean it up. Now we need to get about three more piece. <laughs> All right, so I thank y'all for joining us. Uh, don't forget to give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe, and share our videos also because that's how we're going to be able to share this love. But remember always, this is God's country. That's right. Amen. God bless.